Hey guys, it's Jambros, and welcome to my first video uh, for a physical DPS loot guide for uh, Phase 3 and Phase 4. Uh, Black Temple and Mount Hygel are releasing soon, so I figured I'd start um, doing a series and then a final uh, compendium of everything together, uh, comparing how good certain items are for different classes, uh, and what may be better or what might not be better, um, any sort of loot priority, uh, or just to give an idea for individual players, like uh, how much of an upgrade is something? Is something worth taking, um, even if it's not BIS? Uh, I'm going to start out with Rogues. Um, I'll be doing one for every class, though, every physical DPS class, including Enhancement, Ret, Cat DPS, Fury Warrior, Arms Warrior, Hunters, uh, the whole shebang. So I guess um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, all these will be using different like sims, uh, different parameters, um, either spreadsheets, sims. There's only really one good one that I like for Rogue, and that's Simonize's uh, TBC Rogue spreadsheet. Uh, great spreadsheet, um, really easy to use, uh, has all the different options I need. Um, speaking of which, these would be the options that we will use for uh, all the different classes. Um, it will always be uh, a 186 duration fight um, against a 7700 armor boss. Everything will be single target. There will be no um, cleave, um, all single target. Uh, as you see here, it'll contain things like that, all the different cooldowns, all appropriate raid buffs, debuffs. Um, I do include exposed weakness. Uh, it's different for tier five and tier six, about a hundred agility difference. Uh, scrolls, uh, buff food, drums. I am not including battle chickens. Um, I feel like that might skew things a little too much. Uh, they do provide a significant DPS increase. Um, this is the group composition. It's not perfect groups, but they're good groups for everything. And they include all of the different uh, physical DPS classes put together. So I go. I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the top three items of each tier are going to be used. Um, there will be some exceptions for ring and trinket combinations, uh, just because there are so many different variables there. Uh, I'll probably use about five for each ring and trinket combinations for uh, to find your best in slot for your tier six. Uh, they will use complete gear sets. They don't just sim individual items. Um, these will be entire gear sets. Um, so you can kind of see a realistic version of uh, what it may look like, as opposed to just like the strength of one individual item, say you maybe you need more hit or not. Uh, speaking of which, when swapping pieces for testing, um, other item slots may be changed to keep a maximum DPS output. Um, for example, this is going to be in tier five. Uh, if an item is changed out and you still need to keep a two piece, it will be assumed that you also have are able to keep the two piece just when changing out one slot. <clears throat> this also includes changing gems uh, for hit rating. For example, changing out one piece drops you below a hit rating cap and another gem replaced in another slot uh, is able to raise your DPS. That's a more realistic version of doing it as opposed to just totally dropping hit cap and losing all of your maximum DPS. Uh, it's going to be done in two separate ways. The Tier 5 BIS kind of simulates the opening of Mount Hydral and Black Temple and what would be the largest upgrades right off the bat. Um, tier 5 BIS will use rare gems, but epic gems will be used um, for whenever you change out an item. Uh, in Tier 6 BIS, they will use epic gems the entire time without exception and is more used to simulate the end of the tier and how much of an upgrade or downgrade certain items may be in like a final gear set. Uh, I guess we'll start out with talents before we actually get to the items. Uh, this is a typical combat rogue talent tree. Uh, not really many points to play with except for maybe vile poisons that improved inviscerate. It's very, very minimal DPS difference, maybe about five DPS. Uh, this will be the tier five bis, pretty standard. Uh, and tier six bis, this does include warglaives, but for classes that can use warglaives, rogues and warriors um, there's a i'll be reviewing that at the end to see how much of a decrease increase or loss uh second bis will be all right so let's get started 
So this is uh, the helm. Obviously, Curse Vision of Sargeras is going to be the best piece. Um, that's that way for pretty much every physical DPS class. However, for rogues, fortunately, the tier 6 piece to Slayer's Helm is very close. Well, comparatively. Uh, 11 DPS is a pretty significant, but not as much as some classes may be. And there aren't really many options other than these two items. Um, in Fulvis, like I said, it's just about the same. Tier 5 is a significant drop-off. Uh, tier 6 is much more accessible um, and should be a still solid DPS gain, uh, but only about 12.5 DPS off, whereas if you used uh, Curse Vision of Sargeras. Uh, as for the neck, nothing really comes close to Choker of Endless Nightmares. Um, Serrated Blades, which drops off the Mount Hydral Trash, is an upgrade technically. Uh, it's just that rogues just use so much hit rating. Um, if anything, I would still consider the Braided Eternium Chain second bis because it helps all the other people in your group so much more. Um, but I would really put this Choker of Endless Nightmares as a priority. And same thing with in full bis and tier 6 bis. Um, it just doesn't really come close at all. And shoulders. So upgrading from tier 5, uh, there's nothing that really comes close. Tier 6 is your only real upgrade. Um, leather workers can craft shoulders, but it's a 2 DPS downgrade from tier 5, actually. Uh, it's really not worth using, uh, neither is the Mantle of Darkness from Nagentis. Um, tier 5 is actually preferable to that. Uh, it would not be an upgrade. Your Slayer Shoulder Pads are really your only option. Um, same in tier 6. Uh, the gap only gets even bigger. Uh, almost a 40 DPS downgrade from the Slayer Shoulder Pads. And the Cloak. Uh, finally, the Drape of the Dark Reavers can be replaced out of Phase 1. Uh, in Phase 3, it'll be able to be replaced with the Shatter Me Destroyer's Drape from uh, Terran Gorefiend. Um, in second place is the Cloak of Fiends, which is actually from the first time chest in Zul so that is not technically coming out until Phase 4, but is a solid upgrade. If you're not able to get your hands on the drape from Terran Gorfine, or if you're very unlucky. Uh, in the tier 6 bis, it gets even closer. The Cloak of Fiends has really not that much of a downgrade. Um, so I wouldn't put this cloak from Gorfine too high on your list. Because um, you should be able to replace it pretty easily in tier 4. Uh, for the chest, huge, huge upgrades on all the board, um, all the way down the board from uh, the tier 6 to the Midnight Chest Card from Archimond or the Nether Shadow Tune for Supremus. Tier 6 is where you really want to go here, um, but if something drops, like say the Nether Shadow Tunic, which is not really a contested piece, nobody really wants it, it's technically a really solid upgrade almost immediately. Um, in Fulbus, these are significantly worse. It's really kind of just, these other ones are just kind of stop gaps, or should be stop gaps, until you really get your tier 6 piece. It's pretty important. Um, for the Bracers, uh, you have a couple options here, and they're pretty similar. Technically the best in slot will be Insidious Bands, also from Terran Gorefiend, but you have Good second bis options, um, especially with the Swift Drake Breakers, Bracers. Uh, it's crafted and it's BOE, uh, so if you got the extra gold, you can just upgrade that immediately. Um, uh, in full tier 6 bis, it's about the same story. Uh, technically, the Deadly Cuffs are a little bit better than Swift Strike, but more classes are going to want these as well. Uh, that socket really helps uh, Deadly Cuffs for sure. Uh, and to the hands. This is like not even close. There is only one option that you really have to upgrade your tier 5 hands, and that is with your tier 6 hands. Uh, rogues will use the 4 piece and the 2 piece. Um, it's definitely not negotiable, they're just too good. Uh, the grips and animation are the closest thing you're going to get. Uh, and it is actually a downgrade from your tier 5 hands, so just don't even bother. Uh, the tier 6 hands are insane though. They're very good. Hit, AP, armor pen, and a socket just doesn't come close and is something one of your top priorities there. 
like I said, almost a 53 DPS downgrade in tier 6. Um, yeah, it's pretty, the rest of these are pretty bad. <clears throat> Uh, for tier 5 and tier 6, for the waste, the belt of 100 deaths is still best in slot. Um, you have a few other options. You have the tier 5 crafted belt, which is not as good. Um, there is the Shadow Walker Scored, which is the new belt from, uh, from Akama and Black Temple. And it is technically maybe a little bit better than the crafted tier 5. It's They're about the same. Um, if you were not able to get the belt... Uh, just hope you're able to be able to go back and get one to drop for you. They're a pretty big upgrade. <clears throat> uh, for the legs, you'll be replacing the tier 5 legs again. None of these are particularly good. Um, you are going to want to use the tier 6 legs here, um, but mostly for the 4-piece bonus, but the actual DPS increase is minimal. Um, Skulker's Grief is actually still good, believe it or not, just because of those three sockets. Um, and the new Shady Dealer's Pantaloons from Asgalor are not really worth it. You would, should probably keep your Tier 5 legs um, it's until you're able to upgrade directly to Tier 6. And in full Tier 6, besties are just nowhere near as good. You really only really have one option here. Um, for the boots, finally be able to replace the Itchwalker Long Boots you've had since Karazhan. Um, and you've got a couple options. Um, if you're not able to get the Shadow Master's boots, uh, I guess you can always plug some Epigems in your Edgewalker boots, get a 3 to 4 DPS increase until Phase 4 when the Ninja's uh, Tabby boots come out, which are in, an empty, in a perfect world, in just Tier 5. Those are actually an upgrade over the Shadow Master's boots, but going into Tier 6, they are not quite as good. It's about 3 DPS less. It's not something to worry about too much with the boots. I wouldn't put it super high on your priority list. Just because you will be able to buy the Ninja's Tabby boots with badges uh, as soon as Phase 4 hits. Uh, now on to the rings. So in Tier 5, your base would be the Ranger General and Lethality rings. Um, you have a few options here. You can do the Hygel Rep ring, uh, Storm Rage Signet ring, uh, Deceitful Intent, which drops off Shade of Akama, and the Signet Primal Wrath, which is a Phase 4 ring. Your two best rings and your biggest upgrades, depending on each slot, they're about the same. The Signet of Primal Wrath and the Storm Rage Signet ring. The Hydro Rep ring and Deceitful Intent are probably about side grades compared to what you're, you already have. Uh, here is the Tier 6 comparison for your best in slot rings. A nice little chart. Um, best in slot would be Storm Rage and Signature Primal Wrath. Your next best would be the Hydral Rep Ring. Um, if you don't have one or the other, for instance, the Signet Ring, if you're not able to get it, your next best would probably be the Signature Primal Wrath in Phase 4 and the Band of the Eternal Champion from Hydral Rep. Um, if, you're, if it's not Phase 4 yet, you would probably run with either Lethality or uh, De Deceitful Intent. Or maybe even Band of the Ranger General. They're all right about the same level of uh, DPS. Now, Trinkets. Dragon Spine Trophy is still definitely the best. Uh, and Warp String Pro Coil is right up there. You're not really going to want to upgrade either of these. Or can't upgrade either of these uh, in the next two phases. And you won't re really replace them until Sunwell. Now, I understand everybody may not be lucky enough to actually get a DSC. In which case, your probably best bet is to go for Berserker's Call, which is still about a 17 DPS downgrade. And it's not only until Phase 4. Madness of the Betrayer is not particularly good for us. It's probably best for, to use on other classes. Um, and then there's also the Ashtung Trinket, which you just get from Rep, which is good, considering it's basically free. Um, yeah, lots of different options here. Uh, in the range slot, uh, the Arcanite Steam Pistol is still bis, sort of. Um, the Twisted Blades of Zarek from Terran Gorfine are never an upgrade in any case. The Arcanite Steam Pistol is better, um, so you can just stick with that in Tier 5. Technically, in Phase 4, the Ancient Armani Longbow will be about a half a DPS upgrade. This is, for all intents and purposes, the exact same. If you already got the Steam Pistol from Phase 2, I probably wouldn't worry about it, unless it's just going to be sharded. All right, for the main hand weapon, 
Uh, Talon Avshara was be your Biss in Phase 2. There are really only two upgrade paths here, which is the S3 Arena weapon, which does require raiding or a Warglaive. Obviously, it would be nice to have your Warglaives, but because it is a solid 76 DPS increase from Talon, uh, the Arena weapon is about 9 to 10 DPS, which is still, still good. Um, this is how much of a downgrade it is if you have a Warglaive. This does include set bonuses, so you would be breaking your Warglaive set bonus. So these numbers are a little inflated, obviously, um, <laughs> I mean, about a 200 DPS loss, which is massive. <clears throat> For your offhand, uh, the arena weapon was Biss in Phase 2, uh, in Phase 3 and Phase 4, of course, uh, your offhand weapon, Warglaive, still the way to go. If you cannot get a Warglaive, I mean, they are rare drops and you may not be first in line. Uh, the Blade of Savagery from Mother Shraws is your definitely your best bet. It's a huge upgrade. Uh, and then also your Season 3 Arena Weapon is will be an upgrade as well. And then, of course, you're breaking your set bonuses here still if you downgrade, downgrade from Warglaives. <clears throat> so, huge DPS loss. Now, this is not including the Warglaive bonuses that give you a... Uh, Melee proc chance on haste rating and attack power bonus against demons. Second bis will be the season three arena main hand, the vengeful slicer, uh, and the second bis for the off hand is the blade of savagery from Mother Shiraz. These individual items uh, DPS differences are about seventy one for the main hand and about seventeen for the off hand. The haste bonus itself is good for about one hundred twenty DPS, um, and the demon bonus itself is worth about 100 dps this is a little bit different for a rogue because these were simmed on a, a humanoid um so they have a talent called murder that gives uh, a few extra percentage points of damage now if you switch to a demon they no longer get the murder talent bonus but do gain the attack power bonus uh from the warglaive set so this halves it Pretty much. Um, it'll give you a 50 DPS bonus, whereas uh, if you are comparing demon against demon, it is the full 100. Alright, and that's pretty much it, describing each slot for rogues. Uh, this is kind of a summary of things that you really shouldn't bother with um, under any circumstances. Let somebody else take it, shard it, I don't know. These items are not particularly good. You don't need to craft those Swift Strike Shoulders, uh, Mantle of Darkness, Grips of Damnation, other classes will definitely want that. Um, the Shadow Walker Scord is notice noticeable. It is an upgrade, but only if you don't have uh, the Belt of 100 Deaths. These are mostly useless items. Now, these are good upgrades if the Biss is not available yet, and for, if nobody really needs them in their Biss either. Uh, all good options, some of them easier than others, uh, particularly easy items, for example, would be like the Nether Shadow Tunic from Supremus, or the Blade of Savagery from Mother Shiraz. Nobody else will really want that. The uh, the rep item, for example, everybody will be able to get those. And these are your highest priority items. These are usually contested items that a lot of people are going to want, but not necessarily always. Um, definitely your Warglaives, Curse Vigor Sangaris, Endless Nightmares, uh, Stormrage Signet Ring, super highly contested items. You may not be able to get those. Um, but other really important ones here to note are a lot of Tier 6, which I have noticed was not um, not as big for a lot of other classes like it is for rogues. Uh, the gloves, the chest, the shoulders are all massive upgrades and very important. Um, on their token, it's not super contested, so these are some items you should probably be able to get pretty easily. Um, and that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to do one for every single class in physical DPS. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, I'll be doing all sorts of different videos. Or subscribe to my Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. You can see me play poorly, well, who knows. Um, if you have any questions for me, please do there. Drop it in the comments. Or talk to me on Twitch and see me play. Thanks, guys.